So right now, the Edmonton Oilers are by far the most disappointing team in the league. And that's saying something considering the San Jose Sharks are yet to win a game. But Edmonton, I don't even know what y'all are cooking up here. So Kenny Holland, you're getting fired. Probably should have been fired about three years ago, but that's neither here nor there. And Stick on the Ice has taken over. I'm rebuilding this team for the next 10 years. And I'm going to do everything in my power to not only win them a Stanley Cup, but keep Connor McDavid happy. Because there is no way that this man is happy right now. And looking at this team, we are in trouble. We have no bottom six. This defense is cooked. Yeah, there's nothing else to say. This defense is abysmal. I'm just going to keep on ripping on the defense. Do not blame these two guys though right here. Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell. Their numbers do not reflect what type of goaltenders they are. They are decent goaltenders. They are NHL caliber goaltenders. But these men are left out to dry day in and day out. Both of you are going to get traded at some point because you're not going to be our Stanley Cup winning goaltender, but I will defend you for a little bit here. So when it comes to making moves for year number one, I'm not really going to be doing too much because I'm going to rock with this Edmonton Oilers team as it is right now. In real life, this team looks cooked, but in the game, it might not be too bad. Once we get to the trade deadline though, I'll make one or two moves, but once year number two comes around, yeah, a lot of pieces are getting traded here, and that includes Darnell Nurse. At no point did I ever say this was going to be a realistic video. You are gone, my guy. I'm packing your bags. They're actually already packed right now but i'm gonna give you one year maybe you can turn it around who knows so let's not spend too much time messing around here let's get right to the trade deadline then we'll make a few moves and hopefully the simulation doesn't replicate what they're doing right now because my god how are y'all third last in the entire league you have Connor mcdavid granted he was hurt for a few games and you have leon dry side like last year those two boys carried you to what top 10 in the entire league you were a decent team last year. Now y'all are just trash. So unlike how the Edmonton Oilers season's going so far, our team's not looking too bad. I mean, we're currently in a playoff spot, but there is one thing that's actually very ironic. We're currently second in the division. The Vancouver Canucks are the only team ahead of us. The team that kicked the crap out of the Oilers, what was it? 8-1, to 8-2. All I know is Vancouver scored 8 goals on y'all in the first game of the season. How do you let that happen? But Colorado, of course, at the top of the league. Edmonton's 5th right now. Vancouver's 4th. What kind of universe are we living in here? Also, the offense is looking great, while the defense, also very good as well. Hey, I never said the simulation was realistic, but I mean, I guess we'll take it. It also really helps that right now, Carm McDavid's doing McDavid things as he has 82 points in 61 games. Drysdale 74 points. Hyman 56. Nuge 55. Okay, the scoring here is actually showing out. Also, Connor Brown, 36 points. All right, shout out to him. But we got to look to the future for this team. So I don't want to be picking up a guy like Patty Kane. I mean, he already got traded because we're not going to be bringing him back next season. So I'm looking at the St. Louis Blues and Kevin Hayes is available. 85 overall, 31 years old. I mean, he doesn't help our defense, but I mean, he definitely helps our bottom six. And that needs a lot of help here. We would trade Ryan McLeod over and also give up one of our prospects. But you know what? Hayes is on a great contract. We'll have him for the next two years at 3.5 million. Oh, he got traded. Well, that does not help us. However, this right here could help us. We bring in Verana. We bring in Sammy Blay. They're going to help the bottom six a lot. I'll keep Verana for next season. We probably could get him around 3 million-ish for three years. I mean, that's going to be a great deal for us. Help the bottom six. Then we just got to fix the defense eventually. So we'll send that over. They're saying they got an absolute steal here. Honestly, we really didn't give up that much. And I think that's a great deal for us. So I've been talking about how the defense on the Edmonton Oilers is cooked. And the goaltending, it's okay, but it's definitely not what we need. Spencer Knight, on the other hand, he could be exactly what we need. 22 years old. He's already an 85. He's got medium elite potential. He's definitely going to develop into probably like an 88 overall goaltender. So he could definitely be our guy. You know what? I'm going to start with this package. And we might have to throw a couple picks in. We are. But I'm okay with using a couple picks here. And that's pretty ironic that the guy that literally throws picks into every single deal and does not care about draft picks in the slightest is contemplating not throwing a pick in this deal there we go we added a third rounder we got it done we got our goaltender for the future and then if we could ditch jack campbell somewhere and then clear up that four million dollars then maybe we could go for justin falk and then right after this season flip him again basically he's a cody cc replacement for one year so i'm going to try to cook up this deal right here jack campbell in a fifth rounder over to the philadelphia flyers for our backup goaltender in a third rounder i think we actually might be able to get this deal done they're going to say no a fifth and a seventh i think that will be enough so i'll add a seventh round to this deal and then we'll pick up our backup goaltender and then we'll have enough cap space to make one more move so there we go philly's accepting that deal now let's get one more defenseman so i think this is the final deal i'm going to cook up for this season that's going to be borgol in a second rounder over to the seattle kraken for adam larson we're bringing back that oilers legend we're sending that over they're saying no but we got to add a seventh round to the deal and then that will be enough do we even have a seventh rounder no we don't so here's nashville's sixth rounder i guess that'll be enough to get it done 
I'm Larson. Welcome to the team. So that would be all the moves I'm making for year number one. It's kind of ironic because I said I wasn't really going to make any moves. And then we made like what? Four or five? Yeah. The Edmonton Oilers are definitely a better team after all those moves though. Let's be completely honest with ourselves here. Before we get to the end of the season though, if you haven't already, then make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm still trying to pass the Detroit Red Wings and YouTube subscribers. Now I'm looking at giving some extensions right now. And honestly, we're kind of in a tough position here because I don't think I'm going to be bringing back Sammy Blay because this man wants 2.5 million to play on the fourth line or third line whatever he's playing that's definitely not the right move for us broberg i think we'll bring back you as long as you're going to be reasonable two million's not bad but i really want to bring back Verana, especially if he's going to be a top six guy for us and he's wanting about 4.8 million but i think we can get him for 4.5 and then 4.5 for him is actually not that bad as a top six player so yeah Verana, there you go hopefully you produce on that second line because if you don't this is a terrible move but you know what we take risks around here so boys here we are second in the entire league 53 24 and 5 only one point behind the colorado avalanche and our offense fantastic 3.57 goals per game and the defense absolutely elite 2.89 who would have thought that Edmonton's defense would be elite it's almost like this simulation isn't realistic oh yeah also the Chicago Blackhawks finished third in the entire league with 52 wins so there's that of course the top two guys here gotta be carrying the way McDavid and Drysdale 109 points for McDavid 103 for Drysdale Hyman kind of took a step back after the trade deadline only 75 points New just picking up 72 but I really want to know what Veranda did after we acquired him so I think he's gonna be a nice piece for us oh god this man had nine points in 21 games we just gave this man four points some million oh boy we also have to take a look at spencer knight's stats and since coming to edmonton he's been absolutely fantastic 10 wins four losses three ot losses so he's just above 500 but he's got 915 to 285 i can work with those numbers as we know though from other simulations the regular season really means nothing once you get into the postseason and now we gotta take on the winnipeg jets and they got connor howbuck in between the pipes so our offense better be locked in through the first four games although we're dropping the first one things are looking pretty solved for us we won the next three so we got a 3-1 series lead and i highly doubt this edmonton oilers team is gonna blow that just kidding here we are game six i already know we're gonna lose oh we won eight to two i was completely prepared for this team to choke and blow a 3-1 lead but here we are and we're going to the second round and who's been carrying the way so far verana the st louis legend two goals eight assists 10 points in six games Ayo, hey, Craig Berube, why was he a healthy scratch the other game? I'm just going to say that right now. This man has been great for our offense. And ironically, our offense is actually our weak point this season. This team cannot score goals. Our defense has not been awful. But yeah, let's get Verana back in the game. You might have saw that we were playing the Vancouver Canucks, but of course, we got to take a look at the rest of the playoff bracket. And it looks like the Colorado Avalanche, the team that finished first in the entire league, and the Chicago Blackhawks, the team that finished third in the entire league, are both being eliminated in the first round. So Edmonton, you're technically the highest seeded team left. Y'all better not choke this. But I think it's safe to say if any team's going to beat the Edmonton Oilers here, it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks. Like, I still can't go over the fact that you allowed eight goals to the Vancouver Canucks. Like, that still blows my mind. But here we are, dropping game one. one once again but we're gonna win the next three more than likely we're gonna be losing this one just kidding we're taking that one six to three as well and we're off to the conference finals and i think we might be taking on the dallas stars seeing as they do have a three two series lead but hey who knows we're in the conference finals now and the dallas stars are going to be advancing taking the minnesota wild down in six games so that's who we're going to be taking on next if we can get past this team and make it to the stanley cup final in year number one then edmonton has to hire me as the gm because i did not do anything that was borderline ridiculous when it came to trades i mean trading Stuart skinner for for Spencer Knight's incredibly unrealistic, but hey, the rest of the moves, not out of hand. Actually, that's complete cap because I also traded Jack Campbell. So I would say about 95% of the moves we made weren't realistic, but hey, 5% were, and we're on the verge of winning a Stanley Cup. But Dallas is definitely not one team I would want to sleep on. You know, they got a ton of depth here, fantastic defense, an amazing goaltender in the Otter. Oh yeah, we're taking this team down. 3-1 series lead once again. Let's close it out in game five here. Let's close it out in game six here. Okay, 9-0. We just beat the Dallas Stars 9-0. We have the Boston Bruins. They're taking down the Rangers. Yeah, let's just simulate the seven games here. Let's go get ourselves the Stanley Cup. Oh boy, things are not, we're okay. We're, oh, game seven, we won in overtime. I should have been sim casting those games, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Here we are, Stanley Cup champions, year number one, overtime win in game number seven. I should have sim casted those. You know what? That's my fault. I should have been paying more attention here, but here we are, Stanley Cup champions, the Edmonton Oilers in seven games, year number one. Things are looking fantastic. 
of course the Nuge locked in 32 points McDavid 30 Drysdale 28 Verana the St. Louis legend he stepped up when he had to in the postseason 24 points in 24 games you know what after that regular season performance I was thinking we might have to trade you heading into next season but we're not trading you anymore if anything you might be moving up to the first line but obviously we have to highlight the man the myth the legend Spencer Knight 16 wins in year number one here a 930 save percentage at 225 you know what we're running it back next season we're going for back-to-back -back Stanley Cups and after we win that we're going for the three-peat am I getting ahead of myself here absolutely but you know what you have to have high goals so the st louis blues are getting the first overall pick jumping from nine to one just thought i'd mention that things are tough right now so with us winning the stanley cup of course we're gonna have the 32nd overall pick in hindsight probably should have traded that but you know what it's kind of a good thing we didn't i'm going to be going off the board here because i see this guy ranked 49th but he's got medium elite potential almost 100 percent accurate so you know what we're going to take the risk here i'm taking him 32nd overall hopefully that works out for us we'll go double check because obviously why would i not be able to look at it immediately and we're going to the 32nd overall pick. He's got medium top four potential. That's actually not too bad. I'll take that. That's a W if you ask me. Broberg's going to be incredibly reasonable here. He's only asking for $1.9 million for the next three years. And you know what? I'll do $1.75 and we got ourselves a deal. For a depth defenseman, $1.7 million, especially when you're 23 years old, steal of a deal going through all these guys that are currently on expiring deals there's not many that i actually really want to bring back so we're gonna be allowed a lot of rfas walk same with a lot of ufas like connor brown you did great things for us but i'm not giving you 4.2 million that's just not happening all right matthias yanmark do you want to return on a one-year deal or a two-year deal we'll see what you want 2.1 are you going to be reasonable and come back to the edmonton oilers he is let's roll and we'll also bring back dylan holloway one year 9.5 million he's 22 years old he's still developing he'll be a nice piece but now we're in free agency and we have to start looking at next season's contracts and leon drysidle what do you want because i'll give you exactly what you want you want 10.7 million i'm actually going to take that back here's 10.5 for the next eight years we're not debating too much on that contract evan bouchard i'm also bringing you back what do you want 6.3 i'll do 6 million unless we can do a four-year deal then i'll do 6.2 6.2 for four years. I like that deal. And unfortunately, Adam Larson, after this season, I'm going to have to let you walk. But you know what? We got to make one more Stanley Cup push, and I need you on the team for that. So you got to make some additions to the bottom six. And Gurion off a two year deal at 1.6. That's not too bad considering you're an 81 overall and you're still young, so you're not going to be regressing. And there's no way I can pass up on this man right here. You know what? I'll even give him a premium. And we're doing this for the jokes. Yessi Pugliarvi, two years, 1.6 million. Oh, compensation. Yeah, no, we're taking that back. I'm not sending any compensation over for Jesse Pugliarvi. We were getting a bit out of hand here. But yeah, no, I'm not doing that. We're also bringing in a vet to play on the bottom six here. Silverberg, one year, 1.7 million. It's a bit more than what he's asking for, but I really want him to be on our bottom six. I feel like he could be a nice addition. And then we'll do one more signing here, and that should finish out the bottom six. Also, why not Phoenix Copley one year? If you join the team, you do. If you don't, you don't. You're just another backup goaltender for us. This is what the Oilers are looking like for year number two here. McDavid, he's up to 98 overall the top six continues to look fantastic while Verana, i'm expecting a breakout season from you the regular season was a bit disappointing last year but the playoffs you stepped it up when you needed to meanwhile the bottom six here doesn't look too bad maybe we'll make a couple changes to the fourth line once we get to the trade deadline but other than that it's not looking that bad the defense here is definitely looking to improve with adam larson still in that top pairing and bouchard on the second pairing here and then broberg next season once adam larson's gone you'll be moving up to that second pairing i mean we got all 80 overalls here with some 87s a couple 86s i mean things are looking pretty solid meanwhile the goaltending situation i'm not going to doubt my man spencer knight here 87 overall 23 years old you were a fantastic pickup for us now let's go get our second stanley cup in a row here no more messing around so right now you might think i'd be a bit concerned we're in a wild card spot 10th in the entire league with 74 points 35 wins 25 losses 4 ot losses but you have to consider we have 74 points right now the team in first they have 82 so we're literally eight points away from first in the entire league and we're gonna make a couple moves here and i think those moves will be enough to get us into first and even if we can't be in first if we can finish in the top 10 here and make the postseason you can't sleep on us the scoring right now is pretty solid with the team i mean mcdavid's got 86 points drysdale has got 74 hyman he's got 58 Verani he's got 39 points so far in 64 games not too bad he'll be like a 45 point guy for us i can live with that evander kane on the other hand things aren't looking too great for this man so i think we're gonna have to pack him up so this is the move i'm looking at right now our first rounder for this season evander kane over to the vancouver canucks we'll pick up kuzmenko in the deal hopefully we're able to re-sign him but if not hey 
it's not the end of the world because we're also going to be picking up a second and third rounder i don't think this is enough actually i know it's not enough so we'll take out this third round pick maybe we can get the second and kuzmenko wow i was not expecting that to go through okay that's actually a really good deal for us we might have lost our first round pick but we are picking up a second we got rid of evander kane and really that's not the end of the world so i've been talking and i just realized the recording was paused we picked up boone jenner we gave up matthias janmark a seventh round pick and a second round pick we got from Vancouver. You might have seen it on screen there really quick. Boone Jenner has two years left on his contract. He's a couple overalls higher. Given everything, that was a good move. Okay, somebody needs to explain to me how the beginning of the season, we were all good when it came to line chemistry. Everything was fantastic. Matias Ekholm and Bouchard, what? They no longer get along and now it's a minus two overall boost? What's going on here? I guess Bouchard will go up to the first pairing. Adam Larson, you drop down to the second. Yeah, that just came out of nowhere. So with the moves we did make though, Kuzmenko, I'm going to move you up to the first line to play alongside McDavid because you know, having a sniper alongside a playmaker doesn't hurt. And then Drysal, I'll move you down to the second line. That's going to give this line a plus two overall boost. And I mean, then we have two incredibly good lines. Before we had McDavid, dry style hymen that was our lockdown line but now we got two solid lines then the bottom six looks fantastic this team's built for a stanley cup okay so trading for kuzmenko is probably the worst thing we could have done this man wants 10.35 million we have six million I was hoping, you know what, we'll trade Evander Kane away, bring in Kuzmenko. Kuzmenko's gonna want maybe 7 million. We'll find a way to make it work. 10.3 million. We gave up a lot for a rental. But you know what? We're gonna make it work because we're gonna win a Stanley Cup. Hopefully you become more reasonable after we win a Stanley Cup and not ask for 10 million. Like, bro, what are you thinking? We're at the end of the season here, but before we look at anything, let's give Dylan Holloway an extension. Five years of 2.5. A third line piece for us, 23 years old. He'll continue to develop, probably get up to an 82 overall, maybe an 83. So for 2.5 million, I think that's a great deal. I don't think it's much of a surprise how the Oilers are going to be finishing the season as they're going to be looking fantastic here. 48, 29, and 5. Fourth in the entire league. The offense, it's cooking 3.45 goals a game. While the defense isn't quite as good with 2.91 goals per game. But hey, the Oilers are still looking great and we're about to repeat. McDavid's going to be having himself a fantastic season once again where he's picking up 108 points. Drysdale's picking up 96. Hyman 77. Kuzmenko, what'd you do after we picked you up though? That's the real question. 18 points in 18 games. 7 goals. 11 assists i really want to bring you back but man i can't commit 10 million dollars to you i just can't especially when i just gave dry that same amount i'm not paying kuzmenko the same amount of money as dry meanwhile verana 54 points this season fantastic i actually might want to keep that line together verana nugent hopkins leon dry we just got to find a way to keep kuzmenko here i'm not sure how we're gonna do it but we're gonna have to and boone jenner 16 points in 18 games a great third line player for us yeah, we got a ton of depth here. The defense is looking great. The goaltending's fantastic. And speaking of the goaltending, let's take a quick look at that. Because Spencer Knight, 40 wins, 4 shots, and 910 to 287. Pretty similar numbers to last season. Now let's hope for a similar outcome. We've also picked up two X Factors. Just thought I'd mention that. The development for this man's looking fantastic. The dream of a repeat starts right now, and it looks like we got the Seattle Kraken in the first round. So I'm not too familiar with the Seattle Kraken right now, but all I know is they have a 2-1 series lead on us. So we got to win game four here. Oh boy, things are not looking good. But you know what? If we lose here, I wouldn't be overly surprised because you know why? They have Andre Burakovsky. What else do you need other than Andre Burakovsky? But we're about to complete the 3-1 comeback here, and now we're off to game seven. Even Andre Burakovsky can't stop the Edmonton Oilers. So let's dive right into game seven here. Currently, Kuzmenko's leading the way seven points in six games the first period is going to be a big one here and we're scoring a lot of goals three to be exact but Seattle's picking up two themselves in the second period they're going to be tying this game up so we got to simulate the third who's going to be coming out on top the Edmonton Oilers or Seattle Kraken are we even surprised the Edmonton Oilers 41 shots in this game they're picking up seven goals and now we're off to the second round completing a 3-1 series comeback that was the adversity that we had to go through here now that we've got through that the rest of the playoffs are going to be a breeze. So after completing that comeback over the Seattle crack, we're moving on to the second round. Now we got to take on the Anaheim Ducks. And as we know, Anaheim, they're one of the best teams in the entire league. So this is going to be a fantastic series to watch. But when I say watch this series, I mean, we're going to watch it simulate because I'm not diving into every single one of these games. That would take way too long. And currently we got a 3-1 series lead. Now, like seriously, imagine if we watch the CPU for every single game in the postseason, like 20 minute periods. Each game is going to take us an hour. I'm not putting myself through that. 
that and i'm not going to put y'all through that but we're taking the anaheim ducks down in six games and of those four games that we did win three of them were shutouts so i mean this team's playing some great defense right now and now it looks like we got to take on the chicago blackhawks well over in the eastern conference it's the tampa bay lightning versus the columbus blue jackets so we don't need to look at the bracket we already know who we're taking on and we know what's going on on the other side of the bracket and right now things are looking fantastic for this team a 3-1 series lead let's close it out in game five and take on the tampa bay lightning in the stanley cup final that's exactly what's happening but you know what i'm not going to get ahead of myself here just kidding i completely am we're simulating these games i know i said i would do the sim cast but you know what the team's rolling right now we've got some momentum okay we're going to the sim cast we're down 3-1 in the series a lot's been happening here, but we gotta start diving into these games one by one. But you know what? We really shouldn't be concerned for the Edmonton Oilers. We've already made a 3-1 series comeback before. This is nothing new for us. Two goals in the first period for Tampa. I'm not concerned. I am concerned now though. They have a 3-0 lead entering the third period here. We're not going to be able to complete the comeback, and unfortunately, we're going to be falling. We've made to back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals. We won the first one, lost the second, and we also lost three straight games. Or was it four straight? I can't recall who won the first game of this series. We lost the first game, but then we won the second, even the series up, and then we dropped three straight games to lose the Stanley Cup Final. That's unfortunate, but this team's going to be back next season. We're keeping the core around. As long as Kuzmenko is reasonable. Actually, let's go check that man's contract right now. Is Kuzmenko going to be a reasonable man and say, hey, I'll come back to the team eight million dollars seven million even well he doesn't want an extension so i mean that definitely doesn't help us here what do you want okay yeah 10.5 million it's just not happening why would you not want to come back to the edmonton oilers though like real talk look at the situation this team's in back-to-back -back stanley cup finals and you're like no i don't want to return adam larson on the other hand at one point i was saying i didn't want to bring you back but if we can do a two-year deal here i'll do two years at 4.6 we'll have you till you're 34 years old you're a good defensive defenseman why not let's bring him back dry style in the postseason he was pretty dominant picking up 28 points in 23 games here mcdavid 25 kuzmenko a great postseason from you i'd love to bring you back but i think the big difference maker in this postseason was verana only picking up a 11 points here like 11 points 23 games i was expecting more from you i'm going to be honest like i mean you were fantastic just a year ago and then you put up a postseason like this i might have to trade you i'm not gonna lie 84 overall on a reasonable contract but i don't know it's just not working out here i'm saying that like he completely folded in the postseason and had like two points he had 11 it's not that bad spencer knight was putting up stanley cup numbers i can't complain with this 13 wins four shouts and 920 into 262 we just couldn't find the back of the net that's not your fault so i've completely given up on bringing kuzmenko back so you know what i'm going to trade his rights away and i'm going to send him over to the boston bruins they clearly want him so here you go take kuzmenko i have no clue how much cap space the boston bruins have if they have zero cap space and made that deal then i don't know what they're cooking up over there but hey i'll take advantage of it so this is the move i'm making two six rounders over to the columbus blue jackets for trennan he'll have one more year left on his contract at 1.6 million 80 overall he'll fit on the bottom six and i think that's a good pickup for us they're acting like they got a steal here because they got two six rounders yeah y'all are bugging so i was really contemplating trading my third round pick and thank god i didn't because we got sontag here a medium elite potential goaltender even if he doesn't develop for us and doesn't become a goaltender in the future for us he's gonna have a lot of trade value so that's gonna be a great asset for us i gotta give ea some props here the simulation's incredibly realistic only the arizona coyotes would make this move i'm gonna give them a fourth rounder in exchange for a third if any team in the nhl is making this deal it's the arizona coyotes they would trade their third rounder for a fourth rounder i don't think any other franchise would do that other than the coyotes so we have a handful of guys on expiring deals here but i think heinen's the only one i'm gonna be bringing back two years at 1.4 the rest of the core here just doesn't fit the timeline i mean silverberg's 34 years old he'll be declining soon same with Derek ryan while the rest of these guys they're getting up there they're not going to be getting any better so there's no point wasting my time trying to bring them back and hoping that they can somewhat improve also heinen's not coming back this is the second contract i've offered him he wants 1.5 million i'm just not willing to do 1.5 i mean what am i talking about yes i am here you go 1.5 am i really going to be that stingy over 100k no i'm not okay heinen you're not coming back I'm not giving you more than 1.5 million. I'm just not. Okay, yeah, this isn't being debated. Here you go. 11.5 million for eight years. Connor McDavid, a million dollars less than his current contract. He's getting paid a million more than Drysidle. Why would I not make this deal? Also, Boone Jenner, what are you asking for? Hopefully you're reasonable as well. 5.3 is not the end of the world. I don't know if I want to do 5.3 though. I can maybe do five, but I also have to remember you're playing on the third line. I don't want to give a third line guy $5 million. And we also have some other contracts to give out as well. Because Spencer Knight, I got to pay you as well. And what are you going to be asking for? I'll do 5.75 for the next five seasons. That's a great deal. So Kuzmenko's come back down to reality 
and he's looking for 7.4 million. I currently don't have 7.4 million, but I will make up enough cap space so we will have 7.4 million. And I'll also offer him 7.7. He'll play on the first line with McDavid. We got to move some money here because we are bringing back Kuzmenko. So Matias Ekholm, I got a Nashville reunion set up for you. I'm going to send you along with a fifth rounder over to the Predators. We're going to bring in Fabro. We're going to be freeing up about 4.25 million in this deal. That's bad math. 3.75 million. The brain is not cooking up here. The brain compartments and departments right now, it ain't it. 3.2 seven five million there you go that's the difference they're saying no to this deal i'm really struggling with the math right now it's not looking good but i'll throw another fifth rounder in the deal that will get it done okay we freed up some money here and i think we have enough for kuzmenko now and we do have enough money for kuzmenko so i'm gonna do 7.8 million 7.8 million is 400k more than what he's asking for 7.85 i really need kuzmenko to come and join this team that's the contract i'm going to be giving him and i think we got to free up a bit more money because we have to fill out the rest of the team and i am looking at darnell nurse right now i did say this wasn't gonna be realistic so trading him actually would make sense i kind of want to try to keep it a bit realistic actually i take that back i only want to be realistic in year number one we're past year number one now let's get unrealistic connor bedard no i'm just kidding that's way too outlandish but kevin korchinski could be the move so i think this could be the move here we're gonna send darnell nurse over to the new york rangers along with three third round picks who will bring in keandre miller to be his replacement we're also gonna be getting alexi lafreniere in this deal i think he'll develop Help nicely for us i mean he, i don't think he's gonna be asking too much contract wise because he didn't really have that great of a season only 32 points so i think we can get an extension for him around a five by five but he isn't 85 overall already 23 years old so he's still fairly young put him on the second line with leon dry and verana that could be the move right there but i think if we're going to do this deal we just got to make it simple for ourselves nurse in a first rounder i think we're going to have to give up at least one first rounder in this deal we'll also give him a third rounder as well I think that'll be enough to get this deal done. They're still saying no to that. I'll throw in the third round pick from Boston as well. But if they're still saying no to this, then I think we're going to have to walk away. Okay, it's just a little low. So, I mean, all that's going to take is a seventh rounder. I'll add a seventh rounder to get this deal done. We're going to end up freeing like $2 million up in this deal as well. We have a ton of money to work with right now. It's not a bad deal whatsoever. So, I do think we have to make one more addition to our defensive core here. And Mikey Anderson would be absolutely perfect. Six years at $3.9 million and 85 overall. Yeah, you're not going to get an 80 85 overall for 3.9 million just not possible so i'll give up a second rounder in one of our prospects i don't think that's going to be enough of course it isn't so i'll have to throw something else in this deal i don't think we're going to need too much though so i'm personally okay with giving up a fourth round pick if i have to to get this deal done i've traded away a lot of our picks but a lot of the guys we have acquired here are really young so they're going to continue to develop after the 10 year mark who really cares what happens to this edmonton oilers team because then i'm done as the gm and i'm retiring you're a snake an absolute snake you're going back to vancouver hold on hold on hold on we have to look at what money this man just accepted we built this entire team around kuzmenko connor mcdavid and zach hyman being the first line together that's completely falling apart this man's going back to vancouver you're kidding me how much money did they give you because i offered quite a bit Kuzmenko, i offered more i'm pretty sure i offered more are we gonna have to trade for him we might have to trade for him no nope, we're trading for him kuzmenko you're an l man's the biggest L mans of all time. And I'm gonna have to trade a first round pick just to bring you over here. I am very mad about this. Bro, you literally could have just joined our team. We could have been knock, knock, good, good. Everything's fantastic. You get to play with Connor McDavid. But no, I'm gonna have to give up my medium elite potential prospect and a couple picks here that I don't have because I've traded them all away. Here's a second rounder. I don't really wanna give up my first rounder, but we might have to. Second rounder is definitely not gonna be enough. Here's a third as well. Give me Kuzmenko. Oh, they're saying, no, wow, what a great team you are. Kuzmenko was such an L-mans. Okay, so for the upcoming draft, we're going to have our first round pick and first round pick only. We might not have any picks for the following draft after that. Here's a sixth rounder as well. A medium elite potential prospect, four picks for Kuzmenko. Okay, we have to find a different sniper to play alongside Connor McDavid. That's not named Leon Drysaw because Drysaw is going to play on the second line. Yeah, things aren't looking good right now. So you know what? Who needs Kuzmenko? Kem Fiel is on the trade block right now. Four years left on his deal, 7.6 million, a reasonable player. He could play on our first line, maybe even the second line. We'll find a spot for him. 
They're saying no to that, but we just need to sweeten the touch a little bit. So here's a six rounder. So that means for the 2026 draft, we're going to have a third round pick. And for the 2027 draft, we're going to have a second round pick. We're giving up the entire future for right now, but that's perfectly fine because our right now is technically like the next six years for all the players we have signed. So here's what we're rocking for your number three, Connor McDavid, Zach Hyman, and Leon Dreisler are back together on that first line. On the second, we're going to see Boone Jenner. He doesn't have the greatest line fit here, and neither does Nugent Hopkins. I have no clue how Nugent continues to produce when he has this kind of a line fit, but you know what? We're not going to worry about it. And Kevin Fiala, you're going to be holding it down on that second line as well. The bottom six got some major upgrades. 86 overall, Lafreniere, and then Verana. He's going to drop down to the second line as well. And then we're going to have Holloway in the middle of those two. And then the fourth line, I got no issues with what we have here. The defense is going to be a work in progress for the next few years, but Keandre Miller and Evan Bouchard, they're going to be the top guys here. The second pairing, we've got Adam Larson and Mikey Anderson. And then that third pairing, Broberg and Fabro. Honestly, it's not the end of the world there. The one good thing about this defense, though, is a lot of the guys here, other than Adam Larson, are fairly young. Like, everyone's 25 and below, so everyone's going to continue to get better. And worst case scenario, they stick at the overalls they're at. We can work with that. And in between the pipes, this man continues to keep on getting better. Spencer Knight, 87 overall, but he's picked up another two X Factors. If this team isn't at the top of the league, then something went drastically wrong, and we'll have to sell the entire team. Like, if we're 20th in the entire league, everyone's getting traded. McDavid Drysaddle, that includes you guys too. Okay, so you're going to look at our record right now, and you might be thinking, wow, the Edmonton Oilers are complete garbage. What must have happened? In the last 13 games, okay, 13 games, this team has lost 12 of them. We started the season 9-4-1, and one, and things were looking fantastic. And then we just lost every single game. All these games, we just kept on losing. We lost, and we lost, and we lost, and we lost. We beat the San Jose Sharks, but that's not really an accomplishment. And then we lost and lost and lost and lost. I don't know how to fix this. Okay, I actually don't think I can fix this. McDavid, 19 points. Drysdale, 22 points. Zach Hyman, 13. If these guys aren't producing, there's literally nothing I can do here. I don't know what happened, but just all of a sudden, everyone just decided, you know what? I'm not going to produce. Like, Drysdale, 22 points in 27 games. Can't really complain about that. McDavid, I will complain about this because you are Connor McDavid. And Zach Hyman, bro, what are you doing? We have the same coaching core, the exact same team. Nothing really changed barring, like, two trades to the forward core of course i guess the defensive core is what's holding us back here but i mean are we really worse than last season like let's be completely honest with ourselves we traded nurse away but we brought in keontre miller so like a two overall drop we ended up ditching matias at home but i mean he was like a 82 overall we were paying six million dollars so you brought in fabro here who's an 83 overall so that should have been an upgrade i don't know what to do here i think we got to ride it out this season because i don't want to give up on this core yet like, this guy's holding it down. Show it to the backup, but I mean, we have a good team here. We have a good core. We started 9-4-1. and one. I don't really want to give up on it. We might have to shift some lines, though. I will try that. Honestly, I have no clue what to do with the forward lines. I don't want to break up the first line here, because why would I? They almost have perfect line fit, so the fact that none of these guys are excelling right now makes no sense. The second line, I guess I can move Boone Jenner down to the third line, bring Lafreniere up here. Let's try that. Maybe that will spark something. I have no clue. Okay, we're done. The season's over. We just keep losing. We don't win any games here. Oh, there we go. We've won two in a row, three in a row, four in a row. Okay, are we going to turn it around here? Probably not because we're probably going to drop nine straight or something. I think that losing streak probably cost us a season. I don't think we're as bad as what our record shows. We just lost like... 12 of 13 and it's pretty hard to come back from that all right we gotta get some things clear right now this season has been an absolute train wreck but yet we're somehow not doing completely horrible we're 23rd in the entire league yeah that doesn't look good 30 30 and 3 okay our offense disappeared no clue where that went something needs to change though but the difference between where we are and all the way up here is 10 points. I think there's a small chance we can make the postseason, but we just have to look at the offense here. As you can see, Leon Drysdale's leading the way with 49 points, McDavid 48, like something needs to change here. And I have a plan. It's a very risky plan, but I have a plan. So we got to face facts that Nuge just doesn't fit on the second line. He has no line chemistry there. We have a nice young playmaker in Lafreniere that we can bring up to the second line. So I think we got to do this move right here. We're getting Matty Beniers. We got to sweeten the touch just a little bit. So we have to go all the way to 2028 because we have no seventh rounders for the next two years. I'll send that over to the Seattle crack and we got Matty Beniers on a five-year deal at 4.7 million. Hopefully that can spark something. 
but I feel like we got to make another move. And here's the other move we're going to make. We're going to bring in Lucas Reichel. And the best part about Lucas Reichel is we'll still have his RFA rights. With Boone Jenner, we would just be losing him no matter what. I have to include a third round pick into this deal because they won't do it straight up. I'm also going to try to get a fourth in the process. I'm not going to be able to get that fourth. Give me a sixth or something. I want at least one draft pick out of this. So give me two sixths maybe. They're saying no to that. Can I get one sixth round pick? All right, we're going to have to do Boone Jenner in a third for Lucas Reichel. That's a bit much there. We have no draft picks. Hopefully we can save this season. I'm not sure if we'll be able to though so guys i got some good news we were able to save the season we're gonna be making the postseason here it's not looking good though 15th in the entire league 44 34 and 4 but we do have to consider since the trade deadline we went 14 4 and 1 so i would say that's pretty good the offense started flying i mean that's looking way better here the defense it's still pretty solid 2.99 goals against per game you definitely can't sleep on us in the postseason because since we made all those moves we're looking pretty tough we're not going to talk about the scoring on this team though because that was absolutely cooked this season mcdavid had 67 points Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Zach Hyman. That was the first line. And y'all are telling me 67 points for Connor McDavid. That's just unacceptable. Like, that's actually a joke. Meanwhile, Spencer Knight, I don't really care what your numbers are. 33 wins, three shots, a 902, and a 307. Just step it up in the postseason. I know you can do that. Pretty simple. But the postseason is definitely not going to be an easy task for us as we're going to be taking on the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round. And with how this Edmonton team's performing, who knows what version you're going to get. So let's go ahead, simulate through the first four games of this series here. I would love a sweep, but I just highly doubt that's going to happen. We're taking the first two games, but then what's it looking like? We're going to be dropping the next two. We split the series so far, so game five is going to be a massive one. We got to take this one. We're taking that one one nothing. Shout out to Spencer Knight for holding it down on the back end. He's completing the shutout, and it looks like we're heading to game seven after dropping game six. This series has been going back and forth the entire way. I'm not really surprised we need a game seven. Real talk, we need McDavid, Drysdale, and Hyman to carry the way in this game. Okay, we're going to be allowing the first goal of the game. In the second period, Kolasar is doubling down for the Vegas Golden Knights. We need a big third period. McDavid, Drysdale, Hyman, it's all up to you guys. As long as we don't get shut out here, I really don't care. Okay, we allowed a shorthanded goal, and that ended up being one of the difference makers. Kolasar is going to pick up a shorty while Evan Bouchard is picking up the other for us. Yeah. I don't know why I said the other for us, acting like we scored more than one goal. We're losing three to one here. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Verana, show to you, I guess. Seven points, seven games. You had five goals. I need to see what McDavid did, though. Like, McDavid had 60 points this season. Where is this man? Where is this man, Connor McDavid? No. Okay, this is so dumb. Two points for Connor McDavid. Two points. This man took 25 shots and didn't score a single goal. Connor McDavid we're talking about. 29 years old, Connor McDavid. 98 overall, Connor McDavid. These are his stats. And he picked up 60 points. We had the same coaching core. Basically the exact same team. We had McDavid, perfect line chemistry. Leon Dreisau, perfect line chemistry. And then Zach Hyman, who is almost perfect line chemistry, 60 points in the regular season. This game irritates me. Chicago is going to go on to win a Stanley Cup, so Bedard's going to be getting his first tier. We have to really sit down and evaluate this Edmonton Oilers team because we don't have a lot of cap space. We have a couple guys we got to bring back. And shout out to the Nuge because I'm pretty sure he just picked up a Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks. That's where I sent him, right? I sent somebody to Chicago. I don't remember who it was. No, I sent Boone Jenner over there. Shout out to Boone Jenner on the Stanley Cup. So Lucas Reichel and Lafreniere are both going to be L mans here because neither of them are going to be very reasonable. Like Lucas Reichel, he's wanting $8.5 million for three years. Lafreniere, he's going to be wanting $6.7. I'm actually okay with giving Lafreniere $6.7 because, I mean, he had a decent year with us. Not great by any means. I mean, he only had 43 points. Do I really want to give a man who got 43 points 6.7 million? Meanwhile, Lucas Reichel, what'd you do? I mean, you were almost a point a game since we acquired you. But even still, $8 million, it just seems like a lot. So this is what I'm thinking. Lucas Reichel, I don't think we're going to be able to bring you back. You were fantastic here, but just the money doesn't work. So if I can get the second overall pick here, I would not complain. I'm not going to be able to though, because I was hoping to just do this straight up. But there are some other teams here, like the San Jose Sharks that are interested. They have the fourth overall pick, I think. I could probably do Lucas Reichel for the fourth overall pick. And I'd probably get pick up a future second as well. So I'll offer this over. What are they saying? They're going to say no to that. I think I can get the fourth fourth though so we'll do this instead so lucas reichel we're still getting the fourth overall pick though okay we got the fourth that was a bit easier than i was expecting now in saying that i'm gonna pass on these two guys right here we don't really need another defenseman but we could use some forward depth this guy's a gem too so i mean he would probably be able to jump to the lineup immediately 
maybe not quite 76 overall he's got some x factors though there's some good potential here okay what am i looking at here fred goalie is he going to be the new superstar for us a gem inaccurate medium franchise but more than likely you're going to get him a medium elite potential player here all right we'll draft this dude low elite Fred Goalie, welcome to the team. In the sixth round too, I'll take it. Lafreniere well, is looking for a three-year deal, but that means he's going to be a UFA. I think I'd rather do a two-year at $6 million, and if he doesn't perform, then we just trade him, and at least we'll have his UFA rights, so we'll be able to hold on to a bit of that trade value. So we'll try this to start with. So it's time to start looking at extensions for the future, and I'll give Brobrig four years at $2.9 million. He holds it down on the third pairing. Meanwhile, with Fabro, yeah, that's just not happening. I'm not doing a 5x5 five five for an 83 overall. I can find a replacement for you. You're not that guy, pal. Okay, unless I'm bugging, it finally happened. Varane is breaking out. 87 overall, he's got one X factor, 30 years old. If I put him on the second line now, is he actually going to play up to expectation? Ain't no way it took this long, but here we are. And you know what annoys me the most? The reason that I picked up Kevin Fiella is I didn't think Varane was going to develop like this. So now the question is, do I trade Kevin Fiella? Because I don't need a $7 million sniper to play on the second line. When I have Varana. So it's safe to say I'm incredibly desperate. This is the package I'm offering up for Sam Bennett. I don't know what I just gave up. I probably gave up too much, but we need to free up some cap space. We're just in a tough position right now. So as much as I love Varana here and he's $3 million cheaper than Kevin Fiella, I don't know how long Varana is going to be an 87 overall. Like this could flip at the beginning of the season and he could be back down to an 84. So I think the move here is to trade him while his value is at its highest. So we're going to be making a very risky deal here. We're going to go for Bobby Brink and a third rounder for Varana. And the reason I'm picking up Brink here is because there's a very good chance that he's going to be able to fit on our first four forward line i'm going to pair him up alongside Connor mcdavid leon dry we'll give him an extension hopefully a four by four or something he'll start picking up 70 points a season and then we have a 70 point player for four million is this terrible logic absolutely but we're still going to go with it so this is what we'll do with bobby brink four years at 4.75 million hopefully this plan works out for us if not we're in trouble but then again we're in trouble right now so i mean what's the worst that could happen we lose every single game yes that's actually the worst thing that could happen because we don't own our first round pick so we got to fill out the bottom six here and i think joseph's going to be the start of that as we're going to be bringing him in on a two-year deal we'll also bring in bemstrom on a two-year deal as well 1.7 that's not a bad deal by any means especially for an 82 overall and then we'll finish it off with logan o'connor on a three-year deal at 2.1 million 29 years old he'll probably be an 80 overall for all three of those years i don't think that's that bad of a deal we'll also bring in Rajishka on a one-year deal at 3.7 million to help the bottom six i don't know maybe he'll help maybe he won't we're about to find out i've given up with the logic when it comes to building this team okay so at 29 years old mcdavid's dropped to a 97 overall but we can work with this mcdavid dry bobby brink and bobby brink it's a near perfect line fit this line right here should have no issue producing points we have bobby brink here who's a sniper He's going to be playing alongside Connor McDavid, who's a playmaker, and Leon Draisaitl, who's also a sniper. They should be scoring goals like crazy. Offense should not be an issue. And then on the second line, we're going to have Lafreniere with Matty Beniers because Sam Bennett, it just didn't fit. Because for some reason, whenever this game says, oh yeah, there's a 75% chance the line fit's going to work, it never works. So we're going to do this. Matty Beniers, Kevin Fiella. This is a good enough line. It gets a plus one boost. And then on the second, we're also getting lucky here because this line's going to get a plus two overall boost. The bottom six here looks great. No issues. We should be able to score goals. A problem that some reason we had last season. Now the defense, I feel like this should be good enough to get you a Stanley Cup. 286 overall is right here. 285s here and then an 82 and an 83 we got a defensive defenseman here in adam larson we got a couple offensive defensemen here as well i feel like this should work this right here should be able to keep the puck out of the net the one bad thing though is spencer knight is currently dropped to an 86 overall so he has declined a little bit but you know what i think he's just ready for a bounce back season we're gonna lock in he's gonna get back up to an 88 overall and we'll get ourselves another stanley cup but boy are we risking a lot right now so it's actually amazing what this team can do when they actually score goals third in the entire league 38 20 and 6 averaging 3.88 goals per game i'm pretty sure that's tied first in the entire league and yes it is defensively we're also not that 
bad of a team. I mean, we're not good by any means. We're in the middle of the pack. So yeah, let's see what the Edmonton Oilers can do this season. And McDavid's officially back. 83 points in 64 games. You already have more points than he had last season. Dry has got 75. Kevin Fiel is 67. And Bobby Brink, what a fantastic pickup for us. He's got 64 points on that first line. And we're not even paying him that much. That's a fantastic contract. So I'm going to be honest. At the trade deadline, I'm really looking at what's available here. Nothing's piquing my interest. I did consider Jordan Eberle, but he only fits the top six and not the bottom. And our top six is elite. We don't have to worry about that. But for the bottom six here, yeah, nothing really piquing my interest. So when the season came to an end, not only is the offense for Edmonton getting better, but the defense is as well. 48, 24, and 10. Second in the entire league. 3.9 goals per game, of course. That's the most in the entire league. And 2.95 goals gains. So that's got to put us in the top five here. I think we're just outside the top five. Top six, you know what? That's good enough for me. Now it's time for us to get a Stanley Cup. And when you have guys producing like this, I mean, it's pretty easy to be one of the top teams in the entire league. Connor McDavid, 106 points. Leon Dreisaitl, 104. Kevin Fiella, thank God I didn't trade this man because he's looking fantastic right now. 83 points, 26 goals, 57 helpers. Bobby Brink, another fantastic pickup for us. Sam Bennett. I mean, just look at this entire team here. Absolutely elite. And you know who else is looking elite? The man in between the pipes for us, Spencer Knight. 39 wins, 4 shots, and 9 10 to 274. I'm excited to see what this team can do in the postseason. I got real high expectations. The one guy I do got to check on is Varan. I mean, we traded him away. He went up to an 87 overall. He's having a pretty solid season, though. 51 points, 23 goals, 28 helpers. Not too bad. What did he do last season for us, though? 54 points, so he took a bit of a decline. I think if we kept him on the team, he could have been a 70 point guy. But at the end of the day, I think we made the right decision. So let's jump right into our first postseason matchup, and we got to take on the Seattle Kraken. Three of our four games so far have gone to overtime, but so far the series has been split two games apiece. So game five is going to be a big one. We just dropped game five. We got to take game six here. We cannot be losing in the first round. That can't happen to us. Okay, thank God. We're going to be winning that one four to one and we need game seven. Okay, we're in the second period. It's a two goal game. The third period is going to be a massive one here. After the season we had last year, we can't be losing in the first round. And thankfully we're not because Leon Dreisel is putting the team on his back. We're going to be beating Stuart Skinner three times in this game. Just though I mentioned he's the goaltender for Seattle. And now we're off to the second round. But this game was way too close for comfort. Vancouver's also going to be taking down Vegas in the first round, so it looks like that's who we're going to be matching up against in the second round. Meanwhile, San Jose is winning in seven games, while the Dallas Stars are also winning in seven games, so that's the other matchup going on in the Western Conference. The Eastern Conference, though, we'll worry about that later. So hopefully we can continue the momentum after winning back-to-back -back games against the Seattle Kraken, and right now, it's not looking good. A similar situation to the last matchup. We've split the first four games. Game five is going to be a big one, like usual. We're taking that one, though, so we're switching up compared to the last matchup. So game six, can we finish it up here? No, we can't. Once again, we're going to need game seven in the second round. Why does this team always have to go to game seven? Like, I mean, we have so much talent here, but yet here we are in game seven. We're split in the first period here. It's 1-1. We're going to be picking up a big goal in the second period. We just got to hold it down for the final 20 minutes here. And boy, did we hold it down, picking up another four goals here. That was a dominant game six. And also Kuzmenko. Yeah, we're smoking on that Kuzmenko pack right now. You didn't want to join the Edmonton Oilers. That's what you get. We're taking you out in the second round. That was a revenge game right there. 14 games and two rounds is definitely not ideal. I mean, a lot of our guys are going to be fatigued entering the conference finals. We have the San Jose Sharks, and I refuse to believe we're going to lose to the San Jose Sharks. So let's just simulate the first four games here and get the sweep out of the way real quick. It's not a sweep, but we are up 3-1 in the series. Boston did complete the sweep, so that's who we're going to be taking on. As long as we can win game six here, I do not want to go to game seven once again. Okay, thankfully, we're not going to game seven. We got the Boston Bruins. I think we're going to keep up the trend of not sim casting these games because we've won one Stanley Cup through not sim casting, but we've also lost a Stanley Cup through not sim casting. You know what? Let's just keep going with this trend. I mean, the team's looking fantastic. Holy crap, we smoke them, boys. 10-3, 7-3, 3-0, 3-2, a quick sweep, Edmonton Oilers, Stanley Cup champions. That was sheer dominance. A massive postseason for Drysdale, picking up 27 points, including 15 goals. He was leading the way for us, but we also had a ton of scoring depth. 24 points from McDavid, 24 from Fiala, 24 from Lafreniere, 22 from Sam Bennett, but Matty Benitez, he was one of the other important pieces. He only had 19 points, but we gotta remember he had the three game winners. He showed up when we needed him most. And of course, Spencer Knight, we already know he's gonna be doing his thing in between the pipes. 15 wins, because our backup's picking up the other. One shot, a 914, to 263 and our backup as well a 933 to 160 we've got two stanley cups so far let's go get ourselves another one next season there's like three prospects i want to acquire in this draft but unfortunately i trade all of our picks away so we got to make a couple moves here i'm going to be trading a 2028 20, third round pick to st louis for the 65th overall pick okay they're saying no to this which is really stupid so you know what here's like a seventh as well that has to make the difference i guess there you go 
we got the deal done. And the reason I made that deal, Larry Skinner, it's semi-accurate scouting. I mean, he has the potential to be a mediumly potential goaltender. We're going to take the risk with the 65th overall pick, and it's going to work out fantastic for us. And now we've got ourselves another mediumly potential goaltender. And the other deal I'm going to make here, I'm probably giving up way too much, but I'm going to be trading a third and sixth rounder over to the Washington Capitals for the 111th overall pick and the 143rd. So we'll send that over. They're saying yes to this. They think they got a steal of a deal here. Wait till you see who we draft though. Because with the 111th overall pick, I'm going to be bringing in another medium elite potential goaltender and although we don't need all these goaltenders they're good trade assets they're gonna have a ton of trade value and we can bring in some good defensemen because Adam Larson I don't think he's coming back to the team next season and with our 143rd pick we're gonna be going with Alan Snyder here a low elite potential sniper he's a right winger he's only a 47 overall but I mean that low elite potential that's gonna give him a lot of trade value so we'll be able to work with that so it's time to lock a couple players down Rajishka I'm gonna give you a four-year deal at 2.775 million you fit perfectly on the bottom six and I'm willing to commit this amount of money to you no questions asked well Adam Larson on the other hand I'm not really sure if I want to commit 4.5 million to just for one season you're 34 years old you'll probably be an 82 overall at the beginning of next season so I think I'm gonna let you walk you've been an important piece to our team but I just can't commit that much money to you we can now start working on extensions here and Sam Bennett you can be our second line center for the future here so I'll do five years at 7.15 million Lafreniere on the other hand we have to remember, this is Alexi Lafreniere, a man that had a great season. I mean, I'm not going to complain with his production. 63 points, 26 goals, 37 assists. What do you think Alexi Lafreniere is asking for for a 63-point season? He's probably being very reasonable, right? 11.475 million. I'm trading you. Done deal. Keandre Miller, I don't really want to do above 6 million, so I'll do 5.7 for the next six. I think that's pretty reasonable. Well, Joseph, I'll bring you back for the next two years at 2.5. You're a fantastic fit on the bottom six, and I'd love to keep you around here. So last Lafreniere, since you're going to be so unreasonable, I'm going to trade you over to the Carolina Hurricanes for Kalkin Yemi in a second round pick. Kalkin Yemi is going to do the exact same thing you do, exact same production, and we're going to pay him 4.8 million. You want 11. You're on something different. I don't know what you are talking about, my guy, but we are not keeping you around here. Here's a six rounder in the deal just to get him over there. Yeah, we got this deal done. We even cleared up a bit of cap space for this season. Let's go bring in a defenseman. Which defenseman though? I haven't decided on that yet. So I'm looking at this defenseman from the San Jose Sharks. I'm going to call him Yuri. I think that's pretty close to what his first name is. I probably butchered it, but you know what? We're not going to worry about it. He's a defensive defenseman, 82 overall, and he's only 21 years old, and he has incredibly low trade value. I think we bring him in here. He could probably fit on the second parry, maybe even third, and all I'm going to have to give up to get him is a second round pick and I can work with that okay I'll take the six rounder out there you go we're getting this deal done I think we got a steal of a deal here I think this guy's gonna develop into like an 85 overall player and we only give up a second round pick so his contract is up next season so we got to get a deal done with him I'll do two years at 2.5 and if it doesn't work out we'll trade you away or something but I mean two years I think that's a good sample size to see what you can do with us so I'm cooking something up here and I don't even know what it is but all I know is it's a great trade a first rounder saw tag two second rounders and Snyder over to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Jiracek. Jiracek, an incredibly young player, only 23 years old, 88 overall, and look at this contract. If that's not a fantastic contract and not a contract that we can work around, then I don't know what is. This is the max I'm willing to offer though. I've tried less than this. They've said no. We're sending this over. They're going to say no. I do have one last idea in mind though. So this is how the plan starts. We're going to be picking up a Gimli here for two second rounders, a medium elite potential goaltender, and a third round pick. They got to say yes to this though. Is this a bad package or something? I feel like I'm offering decent packages to teams, but for some reason, nobody wants anything I'm offering up. Okay, so we're going to do this instead. We're bringing in Kemmel. Bro, what is going on here? Okay, we just got to throw in a sixth rounder, maybe a seventh if we have one. I don't think we do. We're going to 2030 here to give them a seventh round pick. That will get this deal done. And then Kemmel, I'm flipping you. Because Kemmel, alongside a first rounder and saw tag, is going to be sent over to the Columbus Blue Jackets to bring in David Jiracek. They're going to say no, but that's perfectly fine because we have more assets to give up. Here's a third rounder. If this isn't enough, then I don't know what is. They're still saying no, okay? We're throwing in the second as well. All of this for David Jurczyk and his fantastic contract. It's a bit low. You're telling me this trade package is a bit low. I didn't want to have to do it. I really didn't. But I think we got to do two first round picks. I don't want to do two first round picks. I really don't. But if I'm going to be doing two first round picks, you better be giving me a third back in exchange. Give me two third round picks. There you go. We got David Jurczyk. You are kidding me. One third round pick. This is a joke. Two first rounders, Sawtag, Kemmel for David Jiracek. Wow, did we just give up a lot there. 
I think I'm going to regret that deal. And the final move we're going to be making here is just sending Logan O'Connor to any one of these teams. I'll send him to the Buffalo Sabres. Why not? We'll get a fourth rounder, but we also free up 2.1 million. And we need that 2.1 million. And the reason for that is after giving out all those extensions, we ran out of money for Keandre Miller. So Keandre Miller will do 5.8 for the next four years. I just needed to make that move so I could bring you back. That was literally the only reason O'Connor got traded. So this is what the Oilers are looking like now. And man, does this team look good. McDavid, 98 overall. Drysdale, 96. Bobby Brink 88 but look at all those x-factors that was the greatest pick of an Edmonton Oilers franchise history and of course it was done by stick on the ice then you got Kem Fiella, Matty Beniers and Kaki Yemi on that second line Joseph Bennett and Rajishka on the third line and then this fourth line right here that's pretty solid we got ourselves that young prospect we drafted fourth overall can't wait to see how he develops our defensive pairings are looking pretty solid although that minus one overall in the second pairing I'm not too sure how much that's going to be affecting us I don't think it's going to be too bad though with Spencer Knight in between the pipes because he continues to hold it down like usual so I'm I'm just gonna say don't let the placement of this team trick you we're still fantastic 12th in the entire league 34 24 and 4 one of the best offenses in the league and probably the best defense 2.77 the game yeah we're the best defense in the league our offense did take a slight step back though we're not the best offense in the league we're probably like, what 10th or something but yeah still great offense a pretty solid defense but yeah why does the offense just do really well one season and then really bad the next I'm not going to consider 3.48 goals per game bad, but you know what I mean. Like, things like this just confuse me. Trisal and McDavid, 70 points each. Why is that a thing? Bobby Brink got better. He's up to an 88 overall with X-Factors. It's literally the exact same coach, exact same team, exact same everything, but yet y'all are performing worse. Why is that a thing? And it's not even like our goaltenders are playing bad either. I mean, Spencer Knight, 24 wins, five shots, a 905 and a 278. He's had regular seasons where he's put up these type of numbers and won Stanley Cups. We can do it again then. However, I will say, Evan Bouchard, there is a possibility you get traded next season. I mean, you're a fantastic player, no question about that, but you just don't fit with our defense here. You only can play on the first line. The second defensive pairing, you're abysmal. And then the third pairing, you're not great either, but I don't want to be paying you this many million dollars to play on the third pairing so after this season we might have some changes coming similar to last season we're at the trade deadline here and i'm looking at what's available i don't see anything that could really make our team better our top six is set we're not making any adjustments to that the bottom six a lot of these guys don't even fit that and defensively yeah i think we're okay because there's not really anyone i'll want to trade away and there's no good defensive defenseman available because that's what we really need so yeah i think we're gonna rock with the team we have and then hopefully win another stanley cup because it worked out for us last season if it ain't broke don't fix it so let's roll with it again so edmonton's gonna finish the season out strong here and they're jumping into the top 10 seventh to be exact 47 30 and 5 a great offense 3.49 goals per game and it goals against that's looking great as well 2.76 the best defensive team in the entire league i don't want to jinx it but i do believe those are Stanley Cup numbers. And honestly, it's all up to the offense. 99 points from McDavid, Drysdale's picking up 95, Kem Fiala 84, Bobby Brink 72. The offense throughout the entire team definitely took a step back this season. Not too sure why that happened, but it did, and we're going to work with it. And Spencer Knight, of course, continued to look fantastic for the rest of the season. 34 wins, 7 shots, a 907, and a 273. I just want to say our two goaltenders combined for 12 shutouts, so they're holding it down, even our backup. Shout out to him. So the repeat's on everyone's mind. Winning back to back Stanley Cups here, our third Stanley. Stanley Cup of the video. Let's go do that right now. So the dream of a repeat's looking absolutely fantastic right now. We have a 3-1 series lead and we're going to close it out in game five here. A massive 7-5 win. Also, we won 8-3, 6-1, and then this one was 2-1, but the offense is looking fantastic, and that was our weak point during the regular season. So if the offense locks in in the postseason, the rest of the league better watch out. Our second round matchups can be a first round rematch from last season, as once again, we're going to be taking on the Seattle Kraken. And I don't think Seattle's prepared for what's about to happen to them. From top to bottom, this Edmonton Oilers team is just better than we were last season. And Seattle, it doesn't look like they were prepared for the first two games, but they definitely adjusted winning the next two. It's a tied series so far, so game five is going to be a massive one. We can't blow a 2-0 series lead. No way we lose four straight after winning the first two. Okay, the offense is waking up in game six, eight to three. And once again, we got game seven between the Edmonton Oilers and Seattle Kraken. So here we go, game seven when it matters most. The offense is flying in the first period. We're picking up three goals while Seattle's picking up two. Show to the Nuge, he's scoring against us. But in the second period, Seattle's gonna be evening it up. But you know what? Let's just lock in, in the third period and win this. Oh, we're gonna need overtime. Nuge is picking up another one. McDavid's picking up the other for us. Game seven, overtime, and we just won. We lost. Jeremy McCann scored. That is, that is something. I said the Seattle Kraken weren't prepared for us. Oh, well, they're prepared. 
and they got back. I will say this does make me feel a bit better though. We are losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champions because they're going to be taking down the New Jersey Devils in six games. So it's not like we lost to a bunch of scrubs. And shout to the news for picking up a Stanley Cup. You'll love to see it. Now it's clear our offense definitely wasn't an issue during the postseason. I mean, everyone was holding it down. Was the goaltending just lackluster? Yes, it was. Spencer Knight, you might have had seven wins, but a 903 and a 323, that's not it, my guy. It just isn't. But hey, you've won us two Stanley Cups so far, so I'm not going to complain too much here. So we got to make a decision here. We either keep Kevin Fiala or we keep Evan Bouchard after this season because we're not going to be able to keep both of these guys. Kevin Fiala, he wants $9.75 million for the next three years. While Evan Bouchard, he's going to want something similar, $8 million per year for the next four. So Bouchard is a little cheaper, but we do have to remember he is playing on the second pairing here. Do I want to pay a second pairing defenseman $8 million, especially when he's not a good line fit? The answer is no. Kevin Fiala, I'll be bringing you back to the team. We'll do $9.4 million or something. Actually, we'll do nine point three. You'll come back to the team, and Bouchard, you're about to get traded. I'm sorry to say, but it has to happen. So I think this is the trade we're going to be doing. Evan Bouchard to the New Jersey Devils for Nemec, a fourth rounder and a third rounder. Nemec's on a long contract here. We got him for the next four years. We're also saving money over the next handful of years, so I like the deal. We probably could have gotten more for how quickly they accepted that, but you know what? I think that's a great deal for us. So we do have to make one signing here to fill out the rest of the roster and I think that's going to be Chris Cryer to a one-year deal at 2.6 million. Hopefully he can fit on the bottom six but I think he'll be able to. So basically we're going to be running the exact same team here but I do have a couple questions. Bobby Brink what happened my guy? You dropped to an 85 overall. You lost four X factors. No, the fall has begun at 27 years old. You peaked already. You hate to see it. Meanwhile, the bottom six here is looking pretty solid. I might move Chris Kreider up to the third line, though, because then they get a plus two overall boost. And then we can keep this young rookie on the fourth line for one more year. Defensively, we're looking basically the exact same here. Nemec's moving into that second pairing spot. And I think it's actually going to work out better because he does have a better line fit than Bouchard did. So we'll see how it works here. Meanwhile, we're running the same goaltending tandem because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And now we got to get back to the postseason to win ourselves another Stanley Cup. These last season, Season, we're not going out like that again. Since our back has been doing such a great job at holding it down, I'll give him a two-year extension at 1.7 million. I think that's a fair deal for him. With a 37-21 and 2 record, I'm actually very surprised that we're only sixth in the entire league. I was thinking we'd be first. But one team ahead of us, the Seattle Crack, and they're ahead of us by 10 points right now. So this team's rolling. 39-17 and 8. Nah, no, they're elite. But you know what we're better at? defense only allowing 2.73 goals per game that's definitely the best in the entire league of course it's the best and we also have a pretty solid offense here not the best in the league but definitely not the worst we're probably in the top 10 here so i can work with that dry and mcdavid are carrying the way the trade deadline no surprises there they got 74 points each kevin fiala he's holding it down the second line 61 points with bobby brink he's got 57 meanwhile i think spencer knight is having the best season of his career here 34 wins five shots and 916 and 247 meanwhile our backup the second i gave this man an extension he immediately began to suck. An 873 and a 388. Now isn't that just tough? So one trade I'm really considering right now is Kaki Nyemi for Brandon Hagel. Brandon Hagel, he's about $1.7 million more, but he's two overalls higher at an 87. He's also got a few X factors and I think he would fit on the second line. This could be an interesting move for us. So if I was going to do Kaki Nyemi in a second rounder for Hagel, would you accept this? They're going to say no. I'll throw in maybe a fifth round pick, but I'm not really willing to give up too much here because I mean, Kaki Nyemi, he's been holding it down. We'll do the third rounder from New Jersey though. We got that in the Bouchard trade. So are they going to say yes to this? They're still saying no. I'll throw in all those picks we got from the New Jersey Devils. I'll actually be willing to do that. So the third and the fourth and the second, there we go. We got Brandon Hagel on the team. So I think this might be actually our best season. Although we're not first in the entire league, we are picking up our first 50 win season. I think it's our first 50 win season. It might be, it also might not be. I don't really remember what our records have been up until this point, but we're going to be picking up 3.57 goals per game and a great defense of 2.85 goals against. When it comes to the stats of the players here, of course, McDavid, Drysdale, they're doing their thing. Bobby Brink's having a great season. So is Kevin Fiala. But Hagel, I want to see what you did after we acquired you. Were you a good piece for us? 15 points in 22 games. You're a minus nine though. That's literally my only issue. I mean, you put up great numbers, but minus nine? Bro, was this line just not playing defense or something? Because that's not a good look. Meanwhile, Spencer Knight, I actually think this is the best season you've had yet. 45 wins. That definitely is your most. Of course it is. And then a 9-12 and a 2-65. Your best numbers by far. We're winning a Stanley Cup this season. And if we don't, then I don't know. We won't really change much. I mean, we're going to be rocking this exact same team next season. So I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm keeping it a thousand. I'm not even worried about the Vancouver Canucks. We're getting past them. 
The Seattle Kraken, on the other hand, I want to take them on in the second round. But they got the St. Louis Blues. You know, that St. Louis team, they're elite. They got Robert Thomas. That's really all you need. So here we go. Simulate through the first four games here. We'll make it a quick four-game sweep, and then we'll move on to the Seattle Kraken. I'm not worried whatsoever. It's not going to be a four-game sweep, but we will be taking them down in five games because we'll win this one right here. An easy 6-3 win for us, and the Seattle Kraken, they're currently up 3-2 in the series against the St. Louis Blues. I'm ready for that rematch. And here we go. Two of the best teams in the entire league match up against each other in the second round the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Seattle Kraken this is going to be one for the history books right here the winner of this matchup they're taking home a Stanley Cup and we've learned from the mistakes we made last season we've improved the team and now we're ready to hold it down winning the first two games here oh man a 3-1 series lead right now let's close it out in game five we'll get this over with quick a 7-4 win nobody can stop the offense right now so if the Seattle Kraken can't even match up against us I don't know who's going to be able to we got the Dallas Stars up next but I'm not worried about Dallas. I'm looking at the Stanley Cup final and a potential matchup between the Montreal Canadiens or Pittsburgh Penguins. The only one I would be a bit concerned about is Montreal because they were also a really good team this year. So I guess we'll see what happens. No, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Dallas did win 47 games this season. So it's not like they're a bunch of scrubs. And so far they've been able to compete with us and we're splitting the first four games. So game five, it's an important one like usual. Who's going to be taking the lead in the series? Of course, it's the Edmonton Oilers. So let's close out in game six here. We're taking down the Dallas Stars and we're off to the Stanley Cup final. Taking on the Montreal. Montreal Canadiens. We already know how Montreal rolls. They're a really good team, but we've taken down a bunch of great teams so far, so I'm not worried about Montreal. We got ourselves a 3-1 series lead, and Game 5, we're Stanley Cup champions. And in Game 6, we're Stanley Cup champions. Thank God we didn't go to Game 7, because I would have been a bit concerned, but you know what? We don't gotta worry about that. The Edmonton Oilers, their third Stanley Cup. is gonna be the top guy here. 14 goals, 14 assists, 28 points in 22 games, but Bobby Brink, a fantastic postseason from him, 25 points. McD David 22, Kem Fiella 20, and then the rest of the depth score in here, y'all held it down. And you know who else held it down? This man, like usual, Spencer Knight, 16 wins, 2 shouts, and 920, and a 263. And the best part about heading into next season, the entire team's coming back. Well, everyone except for Chris Kreider, so you already know for a fact we're ready to run it back. Boys, I just made the greatest draft selection of all time. In the third round, 96th overall, low franchise potential. We just got a low franchise potential, 73 overall in the third round. That's never happened to me before. What an absolute steal. Can we go two for two? Because there is another guy here that has low franchise potential. If we get two franchise players here, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like that would just be insane. In the third round and in the fourth round, that would be wild. Here we go to the fourth round. He's gonna end up being a low elite potential player, but I mean, hey, I'll take low elite potential. So we might've only had three picks in the draft, but with the 96 overall pick, we got the best player in the entire draft. So I mean, a win is a win. So the only guy we lost over the offseason was Chris Kreider, but now we have a ton of players here that are on expiring deals, like Maddie Beniers, Dylan Holloway, Joseph. We got to bring some of these guys back, but I don't know if we're going to have the money for all of them. Maddie Beniers, you're definitely one guy I want to bring back because, I mean, you've been performing fantastic for us. We'll do $6.4 million for the next three seasons. The only issue is, after we make this deal, we have $2 million in cap space. We have to sign all these guys with $2 million. And we also have to bring back the guy we drafted fourth overall, and he wants more than $2 million. And so I don't know how we're going to make this work. So in order to clear up cap space, we got to make some moves. Broberg and Rajishka, I'm going to be sending you over to the Arizona Coyotes for Frollo and a third round pick. I definitely said this name wrong, but you know what? We're just going to ignore it. I don't think I'm going to get the third. Of course I'm not. So we'll try to get a fourth and a fifth, maybe just a fifth. We'll do one fifth rounder and then we'll get this deal done. Oh, they're saying no to that. And oh, we got to sweeten the deal. So of course the seventh round pick, that's going to be the difference maker. So here you go. A seven round pick for 2031. That'll get this deal done. And we cleared up about $5 million here. But we didn't actually clear up $5 million because I now have to give a three year extension to Frollo. And then he's going to be joining the team. But there's also one other guy we're going to be trading. And we literally just acquired him last season. So this is the move. Hagel, I can't thank you enough for helping us win a Stanley Cup. But I just picked up your replacement for $3 million. And I'm paying you 6.5, so I can't have you on the team. So I'm going to be trading you over to the Vancouver Canucks for Brett Pesci. He's coming in on a one-year deal, 34 years old. I literally just need you to play on the third-pairing defense for one season. And we're also going to get a second-round pick in this deal. So I'm going to offer that over. They're saying yes. We cleared up $6 million. And now it's time to give out a few extensions because we got to keep bringing players back. So I have a plan. Step number one, acquire Jensen from the Philadelphia Flyers. I've offered you guys quite a bit for Jensen. I actually think I'm going to walk away because you know what? We've offered more than enough. So instead of Jensen, we're making a deal with our arch rival in the Seattle Kraken, and we're going to pick up Frost and Tolvanen here. 
We're getting this deal done, and that's great because now we have to go back to the Montreal Canadiens. And then I'm going to flip both of them along with the first round pick over to the Montreal Canadiens for a Ginla, and they'll pick up these two other guys just so we can make the contracts work. I'm going to offer this over. They're saying yes. Now it's time to flip those other two guys that we acquired and free up some cap space and get some picks back. So Gavrikov, I don't need you, so I'm sending you to the Anaheim Ducks for a fourth and fifth rounder. And then Massar, I'm going to send you over to the Chicago Blackhawks for two seventh rounders. Now I did not realize that a Ginla was going to be the most reasonable player of all time. Eight years at 3.5 million. Well, it's just under 3.5 million, but that's an absolute steal for an 85 overall or 84 overall we just robbed the montreal canadians so this last pickup is going to be a bit of a gamble for us two years for shane pinto at 1.3 million no nah, but real talk free my man so he didn't do anything wrong he just wanted to place a couple parlays nothing wrong with that so we got to make a difficult decision here rubrock i'm going to keep it a thousand with you my guy you're never going to crack the top six on this team like it's going to be really hard for you to develop into a solid player like you're not playing over mcdavid you're not going to be playing over dry sidle i'm not going to have you playing top six minutes and you're going to be stuck on the fourth line so i think we might as well trade you now while you have a lot of trade value and i'm going to be sending you over to the minnesota wilds for martone here we're going to pick up a second and third in the deal you're never going to reach your full potential here so i might as well make this deal that deal got accepted way too quick I was only going to do Martone in a second. Thank God I threw that third round pick in that deal. So here we go. After all those moves, this team's looking unbeatable. Connor McDavid, Drysaddle, Bobby Brink on that first line. Martone, you're actually going to be playing second line minutes here because you have the perfect fit here alongside Matty Beniers and Kevin Fiella. Then the bottom six here, oh yeah. The lowest overalls are 82 overalls. It's a perfect fit. Let's go win ourselves the Stanley Cup. The defensive core isn't as strong as the forwards, but I'm definitely not going to be complaining with what we have here. And in between the pipes, Spencer Knight. I'll leave it at that. So we're at the trade deadline here, and this has been the strangest season that Edmonton's probably had yet. We'll win 10 games, then we'll lose 10 games. Then we'll go on a 12-game winning streak, and then we'll lose 8 straight. This team can't decide what they want to be. They can't decide if they're going to be a good team or they're going to be a bad team. 10th in the entire league, 34, 24, and 6 right now, only averaging 3.09 goals per per game that literally makes no sense with our forward core but defensively we continue to hold it down so that's really what's saving us and we always seem to have one outlier when this team's not performing that great and it's Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl not performing at their best. I mean 70 points in 64 games is good and so is 71 in 64. Shout out to Bobby Brink, he's doing his thing. But the second line, what happened here? Maybe we should have held on to Hagel because this line cannot score to save their life. They literally have a negative plus minus right now. Okay, we're changing up the lines here. We're making a few moves. I don't know if we'll make any trades though, but we're definitely going to be adjusting lines. So as I said, I don't think we're going to be making any trades here nothing's really piquing my interest and we also don't have a lot of money to work with so yeah I think we're just going to head to the end of the season. I will make some adjustments though to the forward core. So I made one adjustment after the trade deadline and I already reversed it. We went 6-12 and 12 after the trade deadline. Don't worry, we are making the postseason, but we're definitely not a good team. 18th in the entire league. The offense completely disappeared, but we also have the best defense in the entire league still. Okay, not the best, but I mean second best. We can score, and there's two guys we can blame for that. Connor McDavid's finishing with 86 points. Leon Dreisaitl's finishing with 85. Kevin Fiello what happened to you 48 points last year you had 77 okay i'm taking the blame off Connor mcdavid and leon dreisaitl what happened to our second line minus 20 minus 23 yeah what just happened porter you were supposed to be a good fit look at your line fit on the second line and you're a playmaker why would you not fit alongside kevin fiella and maddie Beniers? so you know what i did make an adjustment and i put froloff there i mean he's got a decent line fit too not the greatest in the world but yeah even you sucked with them what's going on and to make things even worse here's spencer knight's numbers 32 wins two shots a 905 and a goals against of three i just want to emphasize this is the season where we go for the repeat. What a shocker that the season in which we're trying to repeat, we just immediately fall off a cliff and start sucking. And I can guarantee you next season, when we run it back with the exact same team, we're going to see success. It really doesn't make sense. And of course, it would only be fitting that once we get into the postseason, we have to take on the Seattle Kraken. Both of these teams have completely fallen off a cliff. Like Edmonton, we won 40 games. Seattle only won 42. I don't know what's happening here but I refuse to lose to the Seattle Kraken. We're not losing this postseason series. We're immediately simming to game six, or after game six, I should say. We're just gonna win this series real quick. Oh God, we are not winning. We're currently down 2-1 in this series, but we gotta make the comeback here. We're gonna lose this series. Okay, we're making a 3-1 comeback off to game seven. This has been a roller coaster of a postseason series. 
And is this roller coaster going to have a good or a bad ending? McDavid's picking up the first goal of the game. Drysdale's picking up the second. We're going to hold it down in the third period, but not really because we're going to allow back to back goals. McCarr and McDavid's taken over. McDavid and Drysdale, they knew they had to step up in this game. And now we're off to the next round. Okay, Drysdale has 13 points in seven games, six goals, seven helpers. I understand why we won now and completed that 3 1 series comeback. It makes way more sense now. Just because we got past Seattle, though, doesn't mean the next round is going to be any easier for us because Seattle's a bunch of frauds now. And now we got to take on the Anaheim Ducks. And this team's going to be a tougher task for us. And it looks like the offense has finally woken up for the Edmonton Oilers. We're picking up nine goals in game three. And we got ourselves a 3 1 series lead. And we're closing it out in game five. And we're off to the conference finals where we're going to be taking on the Winnipeg Jets. I shouldn't really be surprised at Edmonton's success right now. I mean, we brought the entire team back. And it looks like we finally got some momentum going. And I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop us now. And wasn't that just the biggest load of cap that I just said to you guys? We're down 3 1. We're going to win game five. Are we going to complete another 3 1 series comeback? Because I'd be down for that. We're off to game seven who would have thought no but seriously if we can make two three one series comebacks that would be incredible but that's not happening we're down 4-1 heading into the third period. We're not making the comeback here. We're getting blown out 5-1. At least we were able to make the conference finals this season. I mean, there's actually no reason that we should have made it this far, especially with how the team was performing. Regarding next season, though, I don't really know if we're making any moves because, I mean, the team is a good team. At the end of the day, as long as the offense wakes up, then we're fine. Because defensively, we're one of the best. And, I mean, I can't complain with any of these numbers right here. McDavid, 27 points. Drysdale, 25. Bobby Brink, 21. Maddie Beniers, Kem Fiella, both of them are waking up. Honestly, not bad stats by anyone here. Spencer Knight, on the other hand, are you washed now, my guy? 11 wins, a 9-12, and a 303. He might have reached his peak, and he might be on the decline. But he is only 29, so I think he's got a few more good years left in him. So we're at the draft here, and I do have the 29th overall pick, but there's no interesting prospects, so I'm going to be shipping this pick over to the San Jose Sharks for a future third and second rounder. They're saying no to this, so we got to throw a seventh in the deal. Here's Chicago's seventh, 209th overall. There you go deals done but there are some good prospects here and we're going to be drafting a few of them now with the 84th overall pick we're going a bit off the board here i mean this guy's projected 92nd but i want to make sure he joins our team right now highly potential goaltender that man has trade value and we're going to be trading him because we're not going to need him because we have a low franchise potential goaltender and i don't need all these goaltenders we're also going to begin another great pickup in the draft and that's going to be a low elite potential sniper so the only guy we're really losing to free agency is brett pesci but he was going to be dropped to a 78 overall so i'm perfectly okay with that spencer knight i'm okay with doing 7 million per year for the next six years seven years what am i talking about 6.9 million for the next seven years i'm bugging but we're going to be bringing you back to the team and of course the other guy we're going to be bringing back is going to be bobby brink i'll do six years at 7.7 .7 million that's pretty fair for what you produce me an 86 overall you've looked fantastic on that first line can't wait to see what you're going to do this season also we're going to be trading this man because he wants like 6.6 .6 million dollars at 83 overall yeah you're bugging earson it's been a fantastic run you've had some great times here you've held it down as the backup but now we have to say goodbye to you but i'm not going to send you to the arizona coyotes i'll send you to the boston bruins i'm going to be at least a bit respectful like shipping you over to arizona no nah, that ain't it sam bennett you've also done a great job here but i'm not going to be paying you 7.1 million dollars to play on our third line so i'm going to be trading you to the dallas stars for hutchinson and a second round pick and hutchinson i'll give you a three-year deal at 3.4 million because then that will finish out the 10-year rebuild and i can work with that contract and we haven't done this in a long time but a big free agent signing i'm going to be bringing in edmondson for the next five years at 6.7 million and he's gonna be our new number one left defenseman and yes i did give him about 500k more than what he was asking for but i need to know for 100 percent fact that this man's joined the team so yuri our defenseman that's absolutely bugging one 6.6 .6 million they are going to the pittsburgh penguins for a third and a fourth i'm not playing around here 6.6 .6 million for a third pairing defenseman who do you think you are and our final move for this season is a third round pick going over to the san jose sharks for lindstrom he's gonna be a fantastic piece to the third pairing i don't understand why they think they're getting an absolute steal here because if i probably got lindstrom for a fourth round rounder probably but who cares we got the guy we needed and you're not getting finessed if you win a stanley cup and that's a fact so of course it's bounce back season mcdavid's dropped to a 97 overall also dry style he's dropped to a 92 he's getting towards the end of his career here 34 years old we don't have too many years left here we got three more to win a couple stanley cup the forward core incredible i got no issues with what we have here defensively we've made some nice improvements here and honestly i think this is the best defense we've ever had we have fantastic line chemistry from top to bottom we got a couple plus one overall boost and this team's ready to win and on top of that we got ourselves a new backup goaltender to back up spencer knight it's the guy we drafted with low franchise potential he's already up to an 80 overall and he's ready to take over the nhl 
So Edmonton's looking fantastic right now. Third in the entire league, 39, 20, and four. Our offense, it's sparked once again this season. Who would have seen that one coming? The offense sucked last season, so it's gonna be great this season. However, our defense is not good. 3.3 goals allowed per game. That would probably be close for worst in the entire league. We didn't really make too many moves. Okay, it's not worst in the entire league. It's probably like middle of the pack. But even still, for the past like five years, we've been the best defensive team. Now we're middle of the pack. How the mighty have fallen. And although guys like Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisau aren't having their crazy seasons like usual, it looks like we have more scoring depth here and that's what's been carrying the way. Oh man, this is not it. An 892 and a 328 and an 885 and a 315. We are in trouble right now. We are in a lot of trouble. So although our team needs a ton of help here to keep the puck out of the net, I'm not really sure what moves we can make that's not going to make us worse for next season. We could bring in Thatcher Demko, change the goaltending situation up, but I mean, he's actually worse than Spencer Knight. Defensively, I don't want to bring any players in that are going to be one-year rentals because that just doesn't make sense for us. So I think we're going to rock with our current team. And I mean, let's not act like we're a bad team so far. I mean, we're third in the entire league. So like usual, Edmonton's going to be one of the top teams in the entire league. Third to be exact, 49, 29, and 4. 3.3 goals per game but allowing 3.24 i think our bad defense is going to be the one thing that holds us back in the postseason but then again if we can continue to score 100 goals then who really cares mcdavid 90 points drives out 85 bobby brink 76 the rest of the depth here not looking too bad although there are a handful of guys that have a negative plus minus and that's definitely not ideal i think it's every single line that's not the first oh boy that is not good that is not good whatsoever meanwhile these goaltending numbers we're actually just going to pretend that they didn't happen nope the regular season numbers that's not it but unfortunately it just doesn't really matter what we do here because we're going to be getting swept in three games to the st louis blues and you heard me right st louis is going to rewrite the rules and they're going to sweep us in three so there was a handful of games here where we were allowing quite a few goals like four goals here four goals there but it doesn't matter when we lost this one five to three but if you're scoring seven goals a game, it doesn't matter, and we're taking the Blues down in five. Now, I'm not going to lie. If we can continue to score goals with that pace, we actually might be able to make a run in the postseason here. But first, got to take down the Anaheim Ducks to get to the Conference Finals, a place that we ended up falling last season. So through the first four games, it's been a pretty competitive series. We're splitting the series two games apiece. In game five, it looks like the Anaheim Ducks are going to be taking that one. So game six, that's a must win for us. Of course, we're going to be winning that one, and now we're off to game seven. It's actually pretty wild how Edmonton just refuses to lose in any game other than game seven. Like this team will do everything in their power to get all the way to game seven. Down 3-0 in the series, it doesn't matter. We're going to game seven, but unfortunately in this game seven, we're going to be losing four to three. When push came to shove, the offense just couldn't show up and our defense it just wasn't there and although we're losing a game seven to the anaheim ducks you could phrase it as we're losing to the eventual stanley cup champions in seven games because anaheim's going to be taking florida down in six so it's pretty clear to see that after this postseason mcdavid and dry are starting to decline a bit dry he's dropped to an 89 overall mcdavid what have you dropped to you're still sitting at a 97 but you are 34 years old both of these guys are getting towards the end of their careers we got two more years left here it's going to be difficult to win a stanley cup especially with the core we have here because if mcdavid and dry aren't producing nah we're screwed the goaltending numbers though I can't really complain with because Spencer Knight stepped it up when we need him to a 914 to 296. Put up these numbers in the regular season and then we're straight. All right, when it comes to drafting, we're shooting like 0 for 78 right now. We cannot get any good prospects. So a fifth and seventh rounder over to the Colorado Avalanche for a future third. And then right after that, a fifth and sixth rounder over to the Arizona Coyotes for a future third as well. The amount of misses I just had in this draft makes no sense, but we're not going to talk about it. So we're going to be losing Mikey Anderson and Shane Pinto here. Mikey Anderson, man's is bugging 7.2 million. You played on the third pairing last season. I'm not giving you 7.2 million for that. Now I'm not going to lie. We have to make one very, very difficult decision. And that decision is involving Leon Dreisaitl. 90 overall, 35 years old, he can still produce. But do I want to be paying a 90 overall who's 35 years old, $10.5 million? And look at his trade value. It's completely tanked. On top of that, we got to re-sign Jiracek, who's a 90 overall. He's our best defenseman. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that, as well as keeping Leon Dreisaitl. Also, Martone, why have you developed into an 87 overall now? You're kidding me, right? You picked up X Factors. This man has basically done nothing with us. And now we have to pay him. I mean, 53 points last season, that's not too bad, I guess. But I mean, 
87 overall now you're gonna probably want 7 8 million you couldn't have developed like a year sooner or something or you couldn't have developed after i gave you a contract oh mans so there's gonna be a ton of turnover this season like i'm gonna keep it a thousand like we're probably trading about five or six guys but this is what we're starting with leon dries out over to the vancouver canucks for nicolin i'm definitely saying his name wrong but you know what it doesn't matter we're going straight up here one for one just kidding i'm actually gonna add a pick to this deal because i do not want to get completely finessed i'll add a third and a second rounder i don't think we'll be able to get both of those but you know what why not try it we're not gonna be able to do that so i'll try to get the third instead okay we're just doing it straight up one for one this is what we're doing all right we got to add more assets they do not want leon dry sidle and honestly i don't really blame them so we'll do a third and a seventh here like leon dry 35 years old 10.5 million we're getting this deal done here and we just cleared up a bunch of money but that's not the only guy we're going to be trading here because there is one other player on our team who's declining rapidly right now and i didn't even realize how fast this man was declining kevin fiala 30 four years old 9.1 million only for this season though but bro has dropped off a cliff really fast so we got to flip him too I don't know where we're going to be trading him. Maybe to the Buffalo Sabres, but we'll find a destination for him. So Jack Quinn, you're going to be our Leon Drysaw replacement. I'm going to try to pick you up along with a third and two fourth rounders for Kem Fiella and that high elite potential goaltender we picked up. I'm going to offer this package over. I already knew they were going to say no, but I'm going to slowly take picks away because if we can somehow get a third in this deal as well, then that would be amazing. I don't think we're going to be able to, so we're just going to do this straight up. We're getting Jack Quinn. We got a replacement for Leon Drysaw. Now we just have to pray that Jack Quinn is a reasonable person person and doesn't want 15 million so this definitely hurts the team but you know what we have to do it 12 million dollars per year for jack quinn for the next seven years that's hurting us a lot and we also have to do jira check so we're down to about 20 million dollars left oh boy because i'm looking at extension dollars if we're paying jack quinn 12 then we're down to about 21 million now we're going to give david jira check 13.1 so we're immediately down 25 million and then we have 8 million dollars to sign the rest of the team and there's a handful of players we got to bring back still like martone you might be leaving i'm going to keep it a thousand we're probably not going to be able to afford you yeah you're wanting 7 million keandre miller you also need to come back here 6.6 yeah we're in trouble here nemec i gotta bring him back as well we are in trouble we're gonna be losing a handful of pieces here but martone i'll bring you back we gotta make sure the forward core is straight i'll do 6.7 for you yeah 6.7 that's a good deal now with the rest of the team we're gonna figure it out so we got to continue to clear up cap space because i need to bring our defenseman back hutchinson i don't even remember how long you played for this team but i'm trading you immediately holloway is also gonna have to be packaged up here so i'm sending him to buffalo for a third and fifth round pick that's gonna clear up another six million dollars so we'll be able to bring back another defenseman so after debating on which defenseman we're gonna be bringing back i decided on keandre miller here we're doing three years at 6.2 million for all off i'm gonna keep it a thousand with you you have not developed the way i was hoping you would so now i'm saying you to the colorado avalanche we're freeing up another three million and that means we're going to be bringing back nemec okay i got screwed here i was looking earlier we had three million dollars in cap space for next season so i traded away a three million dollar player somehow we only have 5.2 million i don't know how that works we had three million i traded a three million dollar player away by that logic we should have six million just kidding we have 5.2 we didn't have to make that deal then but you know what we have 20 million to work with for this season so jake getzel i'm giving you 4.7 million for one year you can play on the bottom six for us sprong same situation with you i'll give you 5 million for one year we'll find a spot for you on this team hartman you're gonna be another guy we're signed to a one-year deal here's 2.5 for one season and then tivu teravainen why not give you 4.6 million for one year what's the worst that could happen so i just realized we are short one defenseman so we're we're gonna be making a deal here to bring in Samuel Girard for one season. He's literally gonna play with us this season, then he's gone next season. But we had to make this move because we actually were short one because we had a 69 overall in the lineup, and I'm not rocking with that. So here's what the team's looking like after all that turnover. And for next season, we're gonna be screwed. Like we're gonna have 75 overalls on our fourth line. But as long as we can score a ton of goals with this top six right here, then we'll be perfectly fine. The bottom six, I mean, I don't know how I feel. I mean, we got some good pieces here on the third line, but I mean Sprong won't be back. Tara Vine won't be back. Getzel's gonna be gone next season. Like, we're losing a lot of pieces here. Hartman will be gone. Joseph will be gone. This is basically the last dance for us. Defensively, that pickup for Samuel Gerard actually worked out really well for us because he fits perfectly on the third pairing. So we basically have one more chance with this team right here. Meanwhile, somehow the goaltending situation is getting really bad here. Spencer Knights dropped to an 86 overall, but our franchise potential goalie, he might be able to step in next season. So we could trade Spencer Knight, pick up a really cheap backup. And by trading Spencer Knight, we basically free up 7 million. Spencer Knight, this could be your last season with 
the Edmonton Oilers depending on how you play so keep that in mind if this is the last dance with the Edmonton Oilers then we're cooking up something special right now 40 13 and 10 3.79 goals per game second in the entire league actually that's a lie I think it's third yeah third in the entire league but look at this defense right now 2.6 goals allowed per game we're scoring almost four goals a game and not even allowing three but you know how I know it's the last dance for sure McDavid at 35 years old he's dropped to a 94 it's here the fall off is coming McDavid he doesn't have too many seasons left in them we got to win right now we have one last season to win and what's the goaltending numbers looking like spencer knight he's locked in the best season of his career you know what i'm not going to trade you next season we're going to hold on to you we're not making any moves here we have no cap space we have not really many assets to trade i mean we actually do have a bit of cap space i take that back we could make a move here but i'm not gonna we're gonna rock with the team we have here it's basically perfect and we're gonna go get ourselves a stanley cup so here we go the best season we've ever had 54 17 11 3.8 goals per game and and only 2.57 allowed. McDavid's locking in for one more season as he's picking up 105 points. Matty Benier's a career year, 91. Martone, he's having a career year as well. He's up to 81, while Jack Quinn's picking up 80. And shout out to our guy, Bobby Brink. He's got 74. Now, Spencer Knight, I'm not trying to put a ton of pressure on you, but we are relying on you. I need you to hold it down in the pipes for 16 games. I need 16 wins from you. And then we want ourselves another Stanley Cup and probably the last of the video. Unless I can perform some magic and we can win in year 10 and but I just don't see it happening. So let's get the postseason underway and we got the Dallas Stars in the first round. So I was incredibly concerned after the first two games of this series because we dropped them both but luckily we're bouncing back winning two straight. Game five we can't lose this one. All right we're going to game six here. We're simulating this. We're going to Simcast. Bro ain't no way this Edmonton Oilers team is about to lose in the first round. That can't happen. Let's simulate this one. Game six, do or die for the Edmonton Oilers. We got to score here. Let the offense get flowing. That's exactly what's happening. We're taking this one four to one. So here we go, entering game seven. So far, I've simulated through two periods to four, four game. We got to lock in for 20 more minutes. And that's exactly what we're doing. Sprong, the man I picked up in free agency because we had a bunch of leftover money. He's coming up huge in this game. He's picking up the game winner. And he's also picking up the goal to tie this game. Do you have a trick in this one? He didn't have a trick, but he had the two most important goals of the game and we're off to the second round so that first round scared me but i think we've gone through all the adversity we need in this postseason so let's just sweep the anaheim ducks real quick so i told y'all we would be completing a quick sweep here but that's not exactly what's happening we're splitting the first four games of this series as we know game five is going to be a deciding one we're taking that one so that means we're going to be closing it out in game six here we're probably going to lose actually oh we actually won i was assuming we would go to game seven but you know what we're not and we're off to the conference finals so Colorado's made it to the conference finals to take on the Edmonton Oilers, but this team's tired. They've just come from back-to-back -back series, which have gone to seven games, and we're not going to put Colorado through the pressure of another seven-game series, so we'll just take them out real quick. So we've lost some important games. We've been down bad a few times. A four-game sweep. Colorado swept us, but 10-1 to one in game four. Game four elimination. We're about to get swept, and this Edmonton Oilers team goes out there and loses 10-0. This was the best team we've ever had. We're losing about seven players over the offseason. This was the last dance for this team, and y'all lost 10 to 1 in an elimination game. I'm sick to my stomach. Like, I actually really don't care that Colorado won the Stanley Cup and we ended up losing to the eventual champs. We lost 10 to 1 in an elimination game. Spencer Knight, these are not Stanley Cup numbers, but you know what? I'm not going to put all the blame on you. What is Buddy here doing? Or, sorry, what is Guy doing here? He played in three games that had a 572. You have low franchise potential and 85 overall at 22 years old. And you just posted a 572. You should be embarrassed. I mean, thankfully, we can bring back Nemec because we have enough money now. So here's $6 million for the next five seasons. Not even sure if it's worth it. Gerard, I can't bring you back. We don't have money for you. Yeah, you want one year at $6 million. Can't afford it. Jake Getzel, can we afford you? Do you want a one-year deal at $1 million? Nope. All right, we're losing all of these pieces right here. Every single one of these guys, gone. You hate to see it, you really do. Okay, so I don't really understand how this would even work, but you know what, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna trade the 30th overall pick for Zellweger. I'm incredibly curious to see how we're gonna be able to build a roster next season. When it comes to the salary cap, we're definitely over by like 3 million. So yeah, we'll see how that deal works out for us. So we gotta bring back the Oilers legend, Clem Coston for one final season, 82 overall, 33 years old. Now why not? I don't even understand how I can trade for these players because I mean, there's no way that we're under the salary cap because we gave Nemec his extension, he accepted. So we had like $2 million and then we got Zellweger, he's $6 million and we just 
got Clem Cost needs 1.8. I don't know how it's going to work, but hey, we got players on the team, I guess. So we're currently in the re-sign phase and we have negative $1 million. You know what? I am genuinely curious on how a team is actually going to be built here. So I'm just going to qualify a couple RFAs. Probably not this guy, but you know what? We'll bring some people back here. Yeah, like I can't even offer rookie deals. Oh, I can't offer rookie deals. Oh no. Oh no, I really screwed this up. I can't offer this man a contract. So we're going to lose him. Okay, so the team that the CPU was cooking up, it's not it. It's literally full of 60 overalls. We have five forwards on the team. So Zellweger, I'm trading you away to the Arizona Coyotes to bring in these two pieces. We got to get rid of some players here. We got to make some contracts work. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but we're going to find a way to do it. Okay, so we're literally building our team right now off of I see the potential. And Hogson, I see the potential with you. 84 overall left winger. I think you can play for us. Bro, what else do you want? Okay, I'll give you a third round pick instead. I'll give you a third and a fourth. That should be enough to bring him in. I don't want to give you a second rounder, but is that really what it's going to take? A third, two fourths, and a fifth. There you go. Okay, we got this deal done. Now we got to trade Klim Costin away to free up some more money. So we're going to send Klim Costin over to the Calgary Flames for two second round picks. So we're making another trade here, and that's going to be bringing in another bottom six piece. We're not done there though, because I see the potential in Justin Archibald. So I'm also going to be picking him up from the Vancouver Canadiens. Canucks. So for a team that literally had zero cap space, this isn't that bad of a team. I mean, we have a solid forward core here. It's definitely taken a step back from last season, but we can definitely work with what we have here. Defensively, we've kept the top four together and that's what matters most. And this third pairing right here, it's actually not that bad. And then of course we have our two studs in between the pipes, Spencer Knight and Guy Bielinger. If we can make a Stanley Cup run this season, then I'm the greatest GM of all time because there's no reason we shouldn't be competing 10 years in, especially with what our cap situation looked like heading into this season. I'm working miracles out here. Now I don't know how we're in this position, but here we are, fifth in the entire league, 48, 27, and seven, 3.29 goals per game. So the scoring did take a bit of a step back, but the defense is looking pretty solid, 2.85. How did we just finish in the top five? We lost so many games key pieces to our team we were basically just picking up whoever we could but here we are fifth in the entire league and a chance at another stanley cup and it looks like mcdavid had one more season in him because he's dropped to a 94 overall but he's going to be picking up 97 points 57 goals 40 helpers jack quinn a great season from him bobby brink you know what the entire team held it down when we needed them to and you know who else held it down for one more season our man spencer knight 41 wins four shots a 909 to 274 we got to finish this 10-year rebuild off the same way we started it and that's where the Stanley Cup. So let's get right into our postseason matchups and we got the Dallas Stars taking on the Edmonton Oilers first. So far we've been going back and forth with the Dallas Stars and we split the first four games of this series and in game five we needed a big win and Spencer Knight he's going to be picking up the shutout for us so let's finish this off in game six. Unfortunately we're not going to be able to so who have saw this one coming? Another game seven. So here we go game seven against the Dallas Stars. Jack Quinn's been carrying the way. He's a point of game right now and we need the big time players to step up right now and so far it's not looking good. We're losing in the first round aren't we game seven first round we've lost hold on hold on the boys have made the comeback 5-5 five, five. we're gonna simulate overtime here the boys are going for a stanley cup they ain't messing around anymore four goals in the third period martone he's picking up the game winner over jake ottinger the edmonton oilers are here we're going to get a stanley cup we made the most improbable comeback of all time we're not messing around anymore. We're locked in. When the boys make a comeback like that, they're not messing around anymore. Nope. They're making a push for the Stanley Cup, and now we're going to destroy the Anaheim Ducks. The thing is, though, we don't care about the Anaheim Ducks because we're going to take this team down, and then who are we going to match up against in the conference finals? The Colorado Avalanche. They just swept the Chicago Blackhawks. We might be down 3-1 in this series, but we're going to make the big comeback. Never mind. We lost 4-3 in overtime. Yeah, it's a tough way to end the 10-year rebuild. But you know what? Can I really complain about what happened? We won three Stanley cups we made it to the stanley cup final five times don't think we ever missed the playoffs and i turned around these frauds in the edmonton oilers who are currently third last in the league still in the stanley cup champions i did that single-handedly hey yo edmonton fire kenny holland and bring stick on the ice in because i know a thing or two about a thing or two